good afternoon, uh, everyone. My name is Sandra Costa, and I will talk about the effects of protein reduction on performance, rumen metagenome, and metabolic profile in Holstein calves. We will start with introduction. Uh, in the Mediterranean region, beef cattle are usually fed high concentrate diets with a minimum supply of about 10% of a low quality forage. In the similar conditions, uh, Spanish feeding system currently recommend that crude protein content in growing calves concentrates should be between 16 and 18% on a dry matter basis. However, some studies have obtained similar performance results with less nitrogen waste in animals fed diets with significantly lower crude protein content. So we think that maybe nitrogen requirements in growing calves uh, may be overestimated. What remains still unclear is whether the adaptation to a reduced protein intake is due to animals' metabolism itself or due to uh, rumen, microbiota, okay, rumen microbiota changes. In that sense, results found in literature are controversial in relation to how each microbial population changes in response to a lower protein supply. Bearing in mind or previously said, we aimed to study the effect of reducing crude protein content in growing calves concentrates from 14 to 12 percent on a dry matter basis through assessing its impact on performance, nitrogen balance, rumen microbiota, and metabolic profile. To accomplish our purpose, 20, 20 male Holstein calves at the beginning of their growing phase were allocated to two experimental treatments. Control animals were fed the commercial concentrate and barley straw, whereas low protein animals were fed a low protein concentrate and barley straw. Both feet were fed at Libitum, and all the animals had free access to water. On the one side, live weight and concentrate intake were automatically registered in farm facilities during the whole growing, uh, during the whole growing phase that correspond to the whole growing uh, grow experimental period. On the other side, uh, sampling was done in the sixth week of the experimental period to determine nitrogen balance, which was calculated uh, from nitrogen intake and nitrogen excretion in urine and feces, rumen microbiota, which was analyzed by taxonomic profiling of 16S ribosomal RNA, and metabolic profile through detecting all metabolites present in, in plasma and urine samples by liquid chromatography and mass spectrometry. Following with the performance results in the week of sampling, the first we should notice is that protein reduction decreased concentrate intake. So, live weight and average daily gains were higher in control animals than in low protein ones. Concentrate conversion index was identical in both groups, indicating the same efficiency of concentrate utilization. However, we should remember that sampling lasted only for one week. This figure shows the evolution of live weight, live weight during the whole growing phase. And we can see that animals began and ended with similar body weights in both groups. And the same happened with daily concentrate intake. In the week of sampling, Low protein animals were consuming less concentrate than control ones, but the average mm, daily concentrate intake of the whole growing phase was similar in both groups. Moving to nitrogen balance results, low protein animals consumed less nitrogen as it was expected. Nitrogen excretion was higher 
in control animals in both urine and feces, but these differences were only significant in the case of feces. Finally, control animals retain more nitrogen with the same efficiency as low protein ones. Talking now about rumen microbiota results, this table gathers the characteristics of ruminal fermentation. The first we should notice is that uh, protein reduction decreased ammonia nitrogen levels in, in ruminal fluid, but there were no differences in either pH or volatile fatty acids concentration. Butyrate proportion increased in low protein animals at the expense of propionate. This figure is a Venn diagram which shows shared and not shared operational taxonomic units between groups. The proportion of not shared OTUs were higher in low pro was higher in low protein animals, which links with the fact that these animals had a more diverse rumen microbiota because both biodiversity index and richness values were higher in that group. This figure shows the fault change underwent by the main rumen microbiota genera. We can see that genera more affected by the experimental treatment were, in order of importance, Clostridium, Sharpea, Bacteroides, and Bifidobacterium. Of them all, only Clostridium could be related with nitrogen metabolism. Uh, with, <clears throat> Some studies in both uh, humans, pigs, and also ruminants have demonstrated that clostridium ferments amino acids and produces ammonia in both gut and the rumen. Uh, our findings are in agreement with early studies that um, report higher colonic abundance of clostridium genus in pigs fed uh, low protein diets. To sum up, we performed a partial least to square discriminant analysis, and such analysis revealed that rumen microbiota composition was modified by the experimental treatment because animals with a different level of protein intake are clearly separated in the ordination plot. This figure also proves that rumen microbiota of controlled animals was more homogeneous because um, unlike low protein animals, they cluster together and more tightly. Finally, relating to metabolism results, we found above 3,000 metabolites metabolite, which were of which um, 300 were discriminant between groups. These new metabolites probably became present because of the protein reduction. It's also worth to highlight that um, treatment effect was stronger in urine samples than in plasma ones. To conclude with, in our experiment and in the week of sampling, dietary protein reduction led to uh, lower dry matter intake and performance, and lower nitrogen retention and waste. However, we obtained similar performance results when the whole growing phase was considered. Protein reduction also raised rumen microbiota biodiversity, which could constitute an evidence of microbiota adaptation to a low protein supply. Finally, new metabolites appeared, which may suggest that um, low protein animals at the beginning of their growing phase were uh, activating some metabolic pathways that enabled them to cope with the reduced protein supply onwards. And thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for your, your clear presentation. Some questions? Yes. Just, just a minor comment. Uh, could you please give us the ammonia concentration in the rumen? Because it was quite low. Yeah, but uh, yeah, 
Are you sure that uh, it's milligrams per liter? Yeah. Or milligrams per 100 millimeters? No, no. Milligrams per liter? It was really, really long. Another question? In your conclusion, you have some question marks. Do, do you have the, the data or the possibility to answer these new questions, which is, of course, always a nice thing on research that you well, we have, we have uh, s mm, samples of the same animals uh, taken like th four months uh, after the first sampling and we are currently mm, working on uh, their analysis so maybe mm, when we finish that we, are, we will be able to clarify these questions. Uh, Do you find any difference or any economical benefit of using that 12% uh, group protein dye in comparison with the 14? Or not? Or do you do any analysis about if the producer might save money, they change one from the other? You mean the economical advantage of using yep. the 12 percent? Of course, economically is is more um, is is better to use the 10 percent protein diet because the diet uh, the protein is the um, the nutrient more expensive in in the calf's diet. Thank you.